A sweet cabin on a Royal Caribbean ship is one of the most desirable rooms you can find on any cruise ship, but how do you get one without paying top dollar? I've got some tricks and strategies to save money on a suite. Up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and whether you've stayed in a suite before or never had the opportunity yet, the idea of staying in a suite, I think, is still very appealing to a lot of people. After all, staying in the most luxurious accommodations on a Royal Caribbean ship is pretty darn amazing, I've got to say. And having stayed in suites and not in suites, it's always nice to be able to move up and live how the other half lives, if you will. But of course, with a suite means you're paying more money than other types of rooms that are out there. And when I first got into cruising, I just assumed, well, suites are just out of my price range. I'll never be able to afford one because they're just so much more than a standard balcony room or even an ocean view room, right? Well, the reality is price fluctuations for cabins are pretty much universal across every category of room. So yes, suites are going to cost you more money. It's rare that you'll ever pay more money for a standard room over a suite, but that doesn't mean you can't get a suite for a really good price. The key to getting a good price for a suite is really a combination of, I think, number one, a little bit of luck, and also strategy of when you book and how you book it, and also picking the right times of the year to take advantage of it. So if you're interested in booking a suite, Again, whether it's your first time or you're just looking to save money on a suite on your next visit, well, I've got some strategies for how to get the lowest price on a suite. Now, I'm going to be first to admit these are not all my strategies because, again, there's a lot of folks who always book suites, and I reached out to some of our friends at RealCaribbeanBlog.com on our message boards and asked them, how do you get the absolute cheapest price for a suite? What are the tricks of the trade, if you will? And by far, number one thing everybody said was book early. Booking early is a mantra that I've been really sharing here on our YouTube channel for quite a while, but it really applies to suites. Why is booking early so important? Well, basically, Royal Caribbean tends to put its best prices out when they first put out their new itinerary. So they release a new itinerary for, you know, 18, 24 months from now, they're going to put out a certain price. And over time, those prices go up, but it is not uncommon at all for the best price, especially for those suites to be released with the lowest possible price. Over time, as people start booking cabins on a particular sailing, prices start to go up. So really, booking early is the most important thing. Now, if you possibly can, the best time is to try to time it when new itineraries are released by Royal Caribbean. So when Royal Caribbean puts out a new itinerary for Europe, for the Caribbean, for Alaska, literally, if you can book it the day that Royal Caribbean releases it, or even a day or two after, you can usually find some amazing prices. And if you track the prices, when Royal Caribbean releases a new itinerary versus even a couple days later, you will see the price start to tick up a little bit. So certainly booking early is a very important thing to do. One of my favorite strategies for this, by the way, is to let your travel agent know, hey, I'm interested in booking a suite for this particular itinerary, maybe even a date that you have in mind. But travel agents can usually get in on those new releases as soon as they get out there because travel agents are informed by Royal Caribbean when those new releases will be out there. So if at all possible, you want to book as early as you can. 16, 18, 24 months ahead of time. It's not always possible. I get that. But if you're sitting here watching this video and you have the opportunity to think about it for maybe next year, this is a good opportunity maybe to start booking early and wrapping your mind around booking as early as you can. Then once you book your cruise, your work isn't over yet repricing. Now, booking early is a great strategy, but it works even better when you reprice. So Royal Caribbean allows anybody to reprice the cruise up until the final payment date with no penalty. So basically you're booked in a particular cabin and if the price goes down between now when you book and your final payment date, you just let Royal Caribbean know and they can adjust your price. Now if you have a travel agent, this is super easy because the travel agent does all the work for you. If you book directly with Royal Caribbean, then you need to contact the cruise line and they'll make that work for you. Now I know there's some folks that are out there that live in certain other countries like the United Kingdom or even Australia or Germany where the rules for repricing are different. The good news is as of right now, if you're watching this video here in 2022, is that the repricing strategies under the best price guarantee have changed due to the Cruise with Confidence program. Bottom line, you can now reprice cruises in other countries that pre-COVID you wouldn't have been able to do so, but certainly checking prices relentlessly and repricing is one of the best strategies that are out there when it comes to getting a good price on a suite. As I mentioned, typically you're going to find the lowest price when you first book, but it is not uncommon sometimes for the price to get even better from that point. But the reason why booking early and repricing is so important, by booking early, you lock in the price. And then if there's a lower price, well, of course, you can reprice it. But if the price goes up, 
you're guarded against that and you've locked in your price already. All too often, I see folks who look at the price and say, you know what, I'm just going to wait and see if it drops and then I'll book. And what ends up happening is the opposite. The price goes up and they say, oh, I should have booked back then when the price was lower. And whether it goes up $10 or $1,000, <laughs> they're just annoyed by their bad decision. And as a result, they just end up not going on the cruise at all or they eat it and you know they're just not happy about the whole situation. So book early, reprice. Now, something else I've been talking about, but we haven't necessarily singled out as a tip is to use a good travel agent. Using a good travel agent is one of the best tips that are out there in general, again, but again, a good travel agent can help you key in on when those cabins are available, booking them as early as you can. It's super important to be able to take advantage of those services that a good travel agent offers. And the key word here is good. And I'm the first to admit, while I'm a big advocate for travel agents, not every travel agent is the same. I think if we have some travel agents right here, they would say the exact same thing. It's just not every travel agent is created equal. So finding a good one that works with you and works with your style of cruising and can certainly help you out when those new itineraries come out can be a very, very important factor. Another really important way to save money, if you really want to get the cheapest possible suite on a cruise, you should be looking at the shoulder seasons. You want to be looking at the times of year in which there's less people who are interested in going on a cruise. Now, when it comes to the cheapest possible rate, that's going to be a relative price, right? The price for a cruise in the Caribbean in July will be significantly different than the price for the same sailing in the Caribbean in the month of September or in January because there's different levels of demand depending on the time of year that you're going. Same is definitely true for places like Alaska and Europe as well. The idea is you want to take advantage, if at all possible, of the lower demand times, and you're going to find some amazing deals on suites on those ships at that particular time. So if you're looking for the Caribbean, we're talking about the months of January minus, of course, the New Year's holiday, the month of February minus the President's Day holiday, the month of May is kind of soft in terms of demand, September, October, and the first two weeks of November, and the first two weeks of December. If you can go on cruise during these times of the year, you're more likely to find a very good rate for a suite on these particular sailings because there's less people who are interested in going. And this is all just basically supply and demand, right? No matter if you're booking an inside room or a suite, there are better prices during the lower demand times of the year. Now, if you're going on a cruise during a higher demand time of the year, say, man, I have no choice. I have to go when the kids are out of school. I get that. And that's why the first part of the strategy, book early repricing, is still a very good mantra to help you get the lowest possible price. So keeping in mind when we're talking about the cheapest possible price for a suite, we're really talking about a relative price, right? One person's cheap for one particular sailing may be completely different than another sailing. But the bottom line is if you're walking out that door, if you're, or more likely you're walking on board the ship knowing you got the lowest possible price for your suite, it's a great feeling. Where you cruise can also make a difference in terms of getting the lowest possible price. There's no doubt in my mind that suites are cheaper in the Caribbean than they are in places like Alaska or in Europe. And that's because, again, demand and limited availability, and it's also limited season. The Caribbean is a year-round market, so there's cruises all the time, and that means there's a lot of opportunity and a lot of supply. In fact, during the winter months, my goodness, the entire Royal Caribbean fleet is pretty much in the Caribbean, and that means a lot of opportunity. But Alaska and Europe are two markets where you're going to see far more demand because, number one, it's a limited season. Number two, there's a lot of folks who believe staying in a suite is even more important for this particular type of itinerary. Well, you're going to find extra demand for that. Again, you want to book as early as you can to get those particular suites. In fact, when Royal Caribbean releases new itineraries, suites are almost always the first category to go because people that love cruising and cruise a lot are going to book suites, and they know those suites go quickly because there's limited inventory, so they book them up right away. Of course, there are two other strategies for getting a great price for your suite. Number one is Royal Up. Royal Up is Royal Caribbean's bidding program in which you can bid for an upgrade. It's a blind program. So when you put in your bid, you have no idea if, number one, there actually is a suite available, number two, what anyone else bid for that particular suite. But Royal Up can work although it more likely it's not going to. I feel like there's so many other people who are doing Royal Up and trying to get up into a suite as well because it's so desirable that oftentimes it's difficult to you know get past everybody else's bids and actually get the winning bid. In fact, there's a lot of folks I've heard about who put in ridiculously high bids and still don't get it because, of course, just because there's a Royal Up opportunity does not necessarily mean there is a suite to upgrade to. But should you do Royal Up or not? In general, I tell folks, look, you got nothing to lose as long as you're okay with the idea that if your bid is accepted, you're going to go to it. So I guess why not? But just keep your expectations in line. And the last way to get a really good price potentially for a suite is, of course, the last minute booking trick. I wouldn't recommend this as your go-to strategy, but 
When all else fails, sometimes being able to travel within a couple weeks or months of your cruise can potentially save you money. Last minute discounts are not unheard of. And actually with the whole pandemic going on right now in 2022, you're going to find some decent deals out there for last minute cruises. Now, the reason why I don't recommend booking last minute as a general strategy is it's just too unknown. It's too flaky. You'll never know if there's really an opportunity there. And I would hate for you to get within three, four weeks of your cruise and then realize, well, number one, there ain't no discounts out here. And number two, we're going to pay top dollar or it's sold out or Royal Caribbean's limited the capacity. Whatever the case may be, it's just too much of an unknown factor in order to rely on it if this is your annual vacation. Certainly, if you live near a cruise market, live in Florida, live in the Southeast United States, or maybe closer to another port like Galveston or Bayonne, New Jersey, you know, and you can drive to the port pretty easily. Sure, this is a great strategy to be able to do that. And checking in on prices within the next, you know, four to six weeks of a sale date might not be a bad way. In fact, it's not unheard of to see last minute deals for cruises because people cancel all the time. And when suites are canceled, well, you know what? They're going to go back in the inventory. And sometimes you get some really good deals that are there. And my last tip for getting a really good price on a suite is look for redeployments. Every now and then, Royal Caribbean will redeploy its ships. Basically, what that means is they put out a deployment. They say, our ships are going to sail from these ports on these dates. And then fast forward a couple of months or even a year later, and then Royal Caribbean changes their mind. And they have to move the ships around in order to cater to maybe a new deployment, new a ship itinerary. This just happened actually with Wonder of the Seas in the Caribbean for 2022 when Royal Caribbean decided to move ships around there and move Wonder back in. And then there was a big game of musical chairs that goes in there. But when there's a redeployment, when ships are moved from markets and everything's kind of redeployed, there can be some great deals for suites in that particular scenario because Royal Caribbean is trying to fill the ship and they have less time than normal to get all those bookings in there. So you can oftentimes find great prices. So if you're on RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and you see an article, Royal Caribbean redeploys ship A, ship B, and ship C, you definitely want to go look at those prices, especially for suites, because you might find a great deal. Well, there you go. I hope one of these strategies helps you save some money and get an amazing deal on a suite on your next Royal Caribbean cruise. Let me know in the comments below which of these strategies have you used. And if you didn't use any of these, let me know in the comments how you save money on a suite. I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Be sure to like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on your notifications. That's that little bell icon right next to the subscribe button where YouTube will let you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.